Hey, what's up, biochemistry majors? Um, little introduction about myself. My name is Jordan. I am currently a junior, like a lot of you guys, in biochemistry with uh, Dr. Brian. And um, basically, I got really bored from quarantining. I felt like I was going to go insane. So I needed something to do. And I was like, hey, how about I make Khan Academy videos, but like my way, you know? And so here I am. That's what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just going to be going through all the objectives in our reading. Um, I've done the entire reading, and to the best of my abilities, I've tried to answer these questions. Um, of course, I'm a student just like you guys, so I may have made mistakes. Um, so please let me know in the comments if I'd made any mistakes. But yeah, so basically here I am. I'm just going to share my answers to the objectives. Um, so our first objective since the quarantine online courses is lipid biosynthesis. There's going to be two parts to this video. The first part is going to be objectives 1 through 5 and then the second part is going to be objective 6 which has to do with icosanoids. Icosanoid? I don't even know how it's said but basically that one's going to be on its own have its own video because there's this like medical box in the textbook that I really liked and I wanted to share that with you guys as well um, so yeah let's get started the first objective is what are the main subunits of synthesized fatty acids um, this one was a little weird I didn't get much out of the reading for it but like we know already there's a carboxy group and then there's like a long chain hydrocarbon in the synthesis that we're looking at today, we make palmitate, which is 16 carbons long. Um, so, yeah, and then this notation, if you guys don't know it, um, let's see. This notation, let's just talk about it a little bit. This first number is your chain length. So, for example, in this example, it has 20 carbons. This tells you how many double bonds there are, and then this tells you your location. So delta, and then up top here, 10, 13. Um, so you go down here. This is your first carbon, your carboxy carbon. You go eight more carbons, so that's nine, and then your 10th has a double bond. Your 13th has a double bond, and then you can count it up. I think it's 20, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the second objective. All right, so I just did a take earlier and it took like 20 minutes, so I'm gonna have to do objective two a lot faster. Um, all right, let's get started. Also, it's icosanoids, icosanoids. That's how you say it, I YouTubed it. Um, anyways, objective two, be able to describe the process of fatty acid synthesis and then describe the differences between fatty acid synthase one and fatty acid synthase two and then we're going to focus on fatty acid synthase 1. Describe the domains of fatty acid synthase 1. So that's A, B. And then this is kind of 3. We're going to do this part last. This part's really big. Um, Alright. So let's get a big picture first of why it's important. Um, and we're going to see later that it's important in the energy we have to expend for making these fatty acids. But anyways... Um, so here's a list of all the other things that they're used for other than just, you know, storage of energy. So pigments, cofactors, detergents, transporters, icosanoids, right, messengers, icosanoids, membrane, protein anchors, like, there's a lot of stuff. Like, this stuff is important, right? Fatty acids, definitely important. Okay, so how are they made, the big picture? Essentially, they're made by this fatty acid synthase, FAS, right? And this is like really big, large polypeptide enzyme. Large polypeptide enzyme. And it basically is going to do everything on its own. It has multiple active sites, I think six. Yeah, six active sites. And it's going to be responsible for everything, right? And so it's kind of like Superman if you think about it. Dun, 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 dun. It does everything on its own. 
It can shoot laser beams out of its eyes. It can time travel. It can fly. It can take a hit from bullets. It's it's crazy, right? It's like it has everything. It's like the complete package. All right, so let's go to two A first. The differences between one and two. The first biggest difference is one is found in vertebrae and fungi. So like us, this is what we'll find in us. Two is plants and prokaryotes. Um, yeah. Secondly, this is a single multifunctional enzyme. And we said this earlier, it has six enzymatic subunits, right? And it's all stuck together. And in the textbook, you'll see it's like drawn as a little S, a little snake. And so, yeah, this is different than two because each of those colored segments in the textbook they would be dissociated in the cell, right? So dissociation, disso bleh, bleh, dissociated system, and each reaction is catalyzed freely diffusible enzymes. Freely diffusible, that just means they're separated and wandering around in the cell, all right? All right, um, and then finally, the final product of the synthase that we find in us is just one palmitate. So remember, this is a 16-0 one palmitate that's lame right lame so in two in prokaryotes and in plants they can make all kinds saturated unsaturated they can make 16 maybe 8 maybe 20 who knows branched it's crazy so this guy's lame so maybe not superman because because superman's cool you know everyone hates on superman everyone's like batman's better you know give the alien some respect right Anyways, 2B, what are the domains of FAS, the lame one? Um, these are the domains, right? So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 enzymatic sites, right? And I put all the names here. You can pause and you can draw this if you want. I don't think it's important that you draw it. This ACP, this acyl query protein, this is important because it has this like prosthetic group. It has this arm. We'll talk about it a little bit more later. It also has a thiol group on the end. Notice that this one also has a thiol group. This beta keto acyl ACP synthase also has a thiol group in the end. So when we look at later how synthase actually works, it's this active site and this active site. These are the major players, major components, because they're going to be like, they're going to be transferring carbons all over the place. They're going to be extending this fatty acid arm like nothing. It's crazy. So. Let's look at this arm a little bit more. This, you don't need to know this, right? Maybe recognize, I don't know. But this is the arm, and notice this, this thiol group. Remember this SH? This is the flexible swinging arm of the ACP. So if you look in your textbook, it's going to take you through the path of how FAS works. And you're going to see this arm is like freaking swinging all over the place. It's crazy. It's like, I swing my arm back and forth, and like, basically, oh, I'm so sorry. Basically, it's going to, this is like a shuttle system of malonyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA. It's just going to shuttle carbons onto this growing chain, which eventually is going to get to palmitate, this 16-carbon chain. So, I thought this was cool. Like, mechanically, it's like a shuttle, like, I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool. All right, so let's see how it actually works. So there's seven total steps, four formal steps. So this first one is an initiation step. Before you can even make it, you need this thing called malonyl coa It's made from acetyl-CoA, and I call this the commitment step because you're basically committing your acetyl-CoA into malonyl coa so you're committing to fatty acid synthesis. You're committing to fatty acid synthesis. You're going to use the enzyme acetyl-CoA carboxylase and coenzyme biotin. You can pause this video if you want to write this reaction out. Let's keep going. I can't hit 20 minutes again. All right. There's a second initiation step, but this one's charging. So the first one was initiating and making your reactants. This one's charging. So remember I said that KS with the thiol group, the KS, the the KS, I forgot what it's called, and ACP with the SH, these are important. These are the major players, and we're going to charge both of these. This KS is going to get an acetyl group, right? You see? Acetyl group. And then this, 
this ACP, our acyl carrier protein, is going to get a malanoyl CoA. I actually think I drew this wrong, but I am too lazy. I think this is wrong. I think malanoyl CoA has another carbon. So maybe check in the textbook for that. Um, I was kind of rushing through these these drawings. So check on that. Double check on that for me. All right, first formal step, clasing condensation. Basically, we're going to, so we have a charged fatty acid synthase now, right? So, yeah, I was wrong, right? So our malanoia has, has this group. It, it, I drew it as an acetyl group. So don't, don't do what I did, basically. Um, anyways, we're going to do a uh, clasin condensation. We're going to lose a CO2. We're going to lose this CO2 specifically. And we're going to add this guy from here, from this KS. Remember KS? I made this orange on purpose because in our worm picture, our S picture, it was orange. So, um, and then this is our ACP, white with white, right? And you're just going to transfer, and you're going to get two ketones like this. That's the first formal step. The second formal step is a reduction of your pedo, your, <laughs> not your pedo, your beta keto group. Um, so you have your ketos right here, your ketone groups right here. The second one's going to be your beta group, this guy right here. We're going to reduce it. And what happens when we reduce? We get an OH here and an H here. Anytime you reduce, you're going to have to use redox currency. Redox currency. So initially when Dr. Brian said redox currency, I was like, what the hell is redox currency, right? It's just a form of energy in the form of reduction and oxidation. So we're going to have to use NADPH and NAD+. Um, you can pause and draw this out if you want. I want you guys to remember where this guy is made, NADPH. That's going to come up later, NADPH. All right. Where is that made? We kind of just learned it. Third formal step, dehydration. Basically, we lose a water, right? This OH, this H goes away. We get this double bond, nice and easy, reactant product enzyme. The fourth formal step, another reduction. Okay, so remember what I said earlier, another reduction, we're going to have to use redox currency, NADPH to NAD+, redox currency, reactant, product, enoa, ACP, reductase, and we get this guy. I drew the H's so you could see that it was reduced. You don't have to draw the H's though. Um, yeah, so that was our last formal step. So our next step, I like to call it a recharging step. So we initially charged it already, but now you see this cysteine on this KS, remember? KS, keto acyl ACP synthase, keto acyl. I will remember that eventually. <laughs> um, he's not charged anymore, so we're gonna recharge him. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna transfer this guy up there. Transfer him up there. And now I want you to see what happened is now our ACP is not charged. What the heck? So we charge something, but we uncharge the other. So yeah, so the sixth step is another recharging step, but now we're going to recharge this guy. We're going to add another malanoyl CoA. All right. So we do this so that we can recharge the whole synthase so that we can continually add two carbons at a time to our fatty acid chain. It's going to extend and extend and extend. You're going to keep getting more and more red carbons on this thing until you hit palmitate. 16 carbons, then you stop. In us, in fatty acid synthase 1, you go to 16 and you stop. In plants, they're cooler. They keep going. All right, and the seventh step we talked about, right? Repeats. Repeats until we go to 16. Take seven times, and we get palm tape. Cool, I hope I'm not hitting that 20 minute mark. All right, oh yeah, one more thing. Um, so remember when we, we used one ATP in that initiation step to get from acetyl-CoA to malanoyl-CoA? We actually used two more than that because we need to transport that acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol. So in total, we use three, right? Three, and if you think about it, we have seven cycles so one fatty acid, we're using 21 ATP. That's a lot of ATP. That's a significant amount. 
Remember that thing I said about it being important and that list of things? This also reflects it, right? 21 ATP. Yeah. I thought that was cool. I didn't mention in the book, but... I'm um, cool. Let's see where I am on time. Alright. Um, so I'm kind of like editing, recording, and going all at once. And I looked at that last video and the quality was bad for some reason. Um, so I apologize. I, I, I don't think the first objective was that bad. And I, I hope this one's not as bad either. But if it is, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, my setup is kind of scuffed right now. If you don't know what that means, it's like, it's like pretty, pretty ratchet, I guess. It's going to get better. I'm going to get a mic soon and I'm going to get a, a desktop, like a proper desk. I'm using like this crappy laptop right now, but it will get better. Um, so anyways, where does this fatty acid synthesis occur? Um, it's largely dependent on where there's a high concentration of NADPH to NAD+. So remember, we have to use this guy as redox currency to reduce twice in those two formal steps that we just talked about. So we're going to need a high ratio of this. Do you remember where this was made? So I kind of talked about this earlier. Do you remember where this guy is made? It's made in the yeah, pentose phosphate pathway. Or as I like to call it, PPP. PPP. So where was this actually? Where does this occur? In the cytosol. So there's your answer, right? We didn't even need to do the reading for this, right? Um, just kidding. Always do the reading, guys. Always do the reading. Anyways, so in the cytosol, it also happens in hepatocytes, so liver cells, adipocytes, fat cells, and our mammary glands. Mammary glands. Sorry, I'm going crazy. It's late. <laughs> uh, all right, next objective. All right. Objective four, regulation of fatty acid synthesis. Um, so we have two types here. On the left here is going to be our allosteric modifications. On the right here is going to be our covalent binding, covalent modifications. Let's talk about the allosteric first. So citrate, citrate is going to allosterically activate our acetyl-CoA carboxylase. So when there's high concentrations of this, this will be active. Acetyl-CoA is going to commit. Remember we talked about that commitment step in the very beginning. It's going to commit into malonyl-CoA, and this is just going to go straight into the fatty acid synthesis. All right. Palmitoyl-CoA, if we have high levels of this, however, so we're making a lot of it already, it's like a negative feedback, so it's going to come back and it's going to allosterically inhibit our acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Um, so remember I said earlier in the beginning, this is a commitment step. So it makes sense, right, that this enzyme would be the enzyme of choice to inhibit or activate. Um, yeah, so then now on this right side, I guess, yeah, for you and I, this right side, this is covalent modification. So. We've talked about this a lot, but glucagon and epinephrine, they seem to do these things. They they seem, they tend to um, start these phosphorylation cascades, right? Phosphorylation cascades. And phosphorylation of acetyl-CoA carboxylase actually inhibits it. And I hope this makes sense, right? So this covalent modification. If you're running away from a bear, do you want to be making fat? Hell no right? But if your blood sugar is low, you also don't want to be making fat. You want to be mobilizing that fat. You want to you need energy, right? So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's continue a little bit. So, oh yeah, so citrate is also used to shuttle acetyl-CoA into the cytosol, okay? So from, from the mitochondria, yeah, from the mitochondria. So it's used to shuttle acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol. So, high levels of ATP and high levels of citrate, not only do they, not only does this right here, this citrate concentration, allosterically activate it, but it makes it readily available in the concentration of cytosol, right? So these two things make more acetyl-CoA available, and so more acetyl-CoAs can be turned into malonyl coa and more fatty acids, fatty acid synthesis can occur.
Um, lastly, malanoic CoA inhibits beta oxidation. This is another, I talked about this earlier, I think, right? This theme of like how you have to separate two different anabolic and catabolic processes, right? So if you're, if you have a lot of malanoic CoA, you're going to be wanting to make a lot of fatty acids. You don't want to be breaking it down. That's a waste of energy, right? So this is a big theme in biochemistry. You have to be effective. So the things that activate anabolic processes, they're probably going to inhibit catabolic ones and vice versa. Um, cool. We have one more objective and then part two, which is objective six. That one should be pretty fun. Um, so let's go to five. All right, last objective. Objective five, what is the process for creating double bonds for unsaturated fatty acids? So we're gonna have to desaturate what we had. So palmitate, right? We had palmitate and it's it's saturated. It, there's no double bonds in it. We talked about this earlier. Palmitate's the only thing that um, fatty acid synthase one can make. So we still need these unsaturated fats. So how do we do that in our body? We actually need another enzyme. It's called fatty acyl-CoA desaturase, all right? And basically, right, um, we have this fatty acid. It has so many carbons on this side, so many on this side. These N's and this M, they're just, they can be different numbers, right? Um, basically, it's another oxidation reaction or oxidation reduction reaction. Um, so the CH2, these CH2 of interest, right, these are the ones we want to desaturate. We're gonna lose two H's and create a double bond. So we lose H's, that means we oxidize, right? So then our O2, if you see, it gains H's into H2O. So this guy, this O2, he's getting reduced. One's getting oxidized, one's getting reduced. That should make sense, right? So where's our redox currency coming from in this case, right? We talk about oxidation reactions, oxidation reduction reactions. We have to talk about redox currency. Essentially, it's going to cycle through these two guys, cytochrome B5 with iron and then cytochrome B5 reductase, which uses an FAD and an FADH2. It's going to cycle through these guys. They're going to go in circles. This guy's going to go in circles. And our ultimate end redox currency that we use that doesn't get regenerated like these guys is NADPH again, right? So we talked about the PPP and how NADPH is important for fatty acid synthesis. Yeah, it's literally in every single oxidation reduction act reaction, right? Um, so yeah, so like this guy, right, he's losing an electron, so oxidation, reduction, oxidation, reduction, oxidation, reduction, oxidation, reduction. And then this guy, he doesn't cycle through, so this is our final acceptor. This is the total cycle for our oxidation reduction to get unsaturated fatty acids. There's another modification you can do is uh, you can elongate your palmitate, right? Because we only have 16 in palmitate. That wasn't in our objectives, maybe in a future objective, but this is just one of the modifications that we can do. Um, all right, so that's, that's the end for part one. Um, I hope this was helpful. I had a lot of fun doing this, so I think I'll I'll keep doing it. This is me making my videos.